In this video, I want to compare the life cycles of bacteriophage with what we think we know about human viruses. We're also going to compare structure and symmetry because there are some distinctions that are worth noting. Um, we're specifically going to focus on attachment and penetration, in other words, how they get in and how they're, they're similar and different, as well as release, in other words, how they get out and where they're similar and different. So let's start first with some structural and symmetrical uh, similarities and differences. Uh, phage are almost all complex viruses, meaning they have um, some sort of polyhedral head and a helical tail structure to them with tail fibers that allow for attachment, whereas human viruses are more often going to be polyhedral or helical. And we know that polyhedra are more common than the helices, though the helices are not uh, rare by any means. Another physical difference is that human viruses have the potential to be enveloped with attachment spikes on the surface, whereas phage are almost never enveloped. There are always exceptions to the rules, but phage are almost never enveloped. Why do you think that is? Mm, peptidoglycan gets in the way, right? Uh, budding is the process of, of release for an enveloped human virus. It has to push through the membrane and take some membrane with it. Well, there's peptidoglycan in the way for the bacteriophage, and so it's very uncommon for phage to be enveloped, but not at all uncommon for human viruses to be enveloped. Phage often carry lysozyme with them as an enzyme. No reason for a human virus to carry that, but instead human viruses, if they're RNA, will carry an RNA replicase, right? an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. We talked about the reasoning behind that in an earlier video. If it's a retrovirus, they'll carry reverse transcriptase, and we'll have a separate video on, on retroviruses in just a few minutes. And many of them carry neuraminidases, like the influenza viruses, that allow them to chew their way in and chew their way out past extracellular matrices that protect many of our tissues. And then their genomes are a little bit different too. Phage genomes are almost always double-stranded DNA, whereas human virus genomes can be double or single-stranded DNA, and they can be double or single-stranded RNA. So there are some important structural differences between the phage and the human viruses. <clears throat> now, how do attachment and penetration differ between phage and human viruses? Well, with phage, attachment and penetration takes place through interaction between tail fibers, and then just the DNA being injected all the way across, in this case it's a, a gram negative, all the way across an outer membrane, a peptidoglycan, and a cytoplasmic membrane. But then the capsid, the empty capsid, remains on the outside of the cell. In human viruses, on the other hand, in a naked human virus, most naked human viruses are going to trigger endocytosis. In other words, interaction between the attachment fibers on the surface of the capsid and some sort of receptor molecule on the surface of the host cell induces essentially a feeding response. The cell says, ooh, yummy, something's good out here, and it brings it in. So it literally tricks the host cell to taking it in, and then through a series of what are called... Um, uh, uncoating steps, the membrane is degraded, and then so the membrane here has to be broken down, and then of course the capsid has to be broken down, and that'll release the nucleic acid that can then instruct the taker, takeover of the cell. So that's with a naked human virus, uh, the entire capsid, uh, entire nucleocapsid, combination of nucleic acid and capsid, is brought in. In an enveloped human virus, which apparently the author thought looks like pizza, in an enveloped human virus, the envelope will fuse to the membrane. You see what's happening here? The envelope fuses to the membrane. The nucleocapsid, the pizza slice, enters and then needs to be uh, uncoated to expose the nucleic acid. So we've either got membrane fusion in an enveloped virus or we've got endocytosis in a naked virus. And you see how those compare to this injection process on the left of a phage where the DNA alone gets in, not the entire nucleocapsid. All right, well, how does release differ then between phage and human viruses? In phage, release ultimately always comes from lysis. Okay, so here's a, a, a bacterial cell bursting with hundreds of individual virions. Even if a lysogenic phage is going to ultimately be released, it has to re-enter the lytic cycle. 
So a true lytic phage is always going to lyse the host. A lysogenic phage will eventually have to lyse the host if individual virion particles are going to be released. Um, naked human viruses, I'm going to add that to this list here, naked human viruses will... Uh, will completely lyse the cell. They have to bust the cell open so all the little individual naked virions can get out. An enveloped human virus, on the other hand, has to get out by what's called budding. Budding is this process where most of the virion, the, the, the nucleocapsid, is assembled on the inside, but then the nucleocapsid pushes its way through the membrane, literally through exocytosis, right? If, it, if, if a naked virus gets in by endocytosis, an enveloped virus gets out by exocytosis, and then it leaves fully enveloped with a bit of, of membrane wrapped around it. If this happens slowly enough, the cell is likely to be self-healing, right? The membrane is pretty self-healing because the hydrophobic interior, the membrane should be self-healing and the cell is probably going to be able to replace uh, the missing envelope material so it keeps a certain surface area. If it happens fast enough, it's going to kill the cell and ultimately lyse the cell as well. So release uh, can be different or it can be the same. Naked viruses get out the same way that, that um, that uh, uh, bacteriophage get out, but enveloped human viruses get out through this budding process. Okay, quick lesson summary. Uh, there's a very different structure between phage and human viruses. Uh, there are numerous genome types found in the human viruses, whereas in the phage, it's almost always going to be double-stranded DNA. In both cases, the genome is going to be protected by a protein capsid, and those protein capsids are going to have a lot of variability. Some human viruses have envelopes with spikes. We don't see that among the bacteriophage. And some viruses package their own enzymes uh, along with them. So uh, some similarities and some differences between the phage and the human viruses, uh, and it's important to know all of these.